Hello peeps and welcome back to Galt's Gorge. Now I've done some work off camera and I've actually done more work off camera than I intended to. I had an episode recorded and I went to render it today and noticed that I completely forgot to save my voice track. So the choices were either record a 40 minute voiceover, which you guys know I hate doing, or just get on with it and record. So, let me fill you guys in on exactly what I did last episode. Let me explain. Actually, no, that'll take too long. Let me sum up. Power is now in here. This is the beginnings of our power plant. Four steam dynamos with a cache up here with charcoal in it. These have been upgraded using the upgrade shown. This one right here, the hardened upgrade kit. Bronze, Anvar, Redstone. This allows you to upgrade machines. Um, previously you had to upgrade your machines by making the different style of machine cores, and then you could upgrade machines with those machine cores. Now you just create these upgrade kits and apply them directly to machines in thermal expansion to upgrade them. It's a lot more convenient, it's a lot easier, and it also increases the number of things that can be upgraded. Dynamos can be upgraded. These now have an augmentation slot where they didn't before. Excitation field limiters in each one of these in order to keep us from wasting charcoal. We also have four hardened energy cells. These hold 8 million RF per tick, or 8 million RF, and can output 4,000 per tick compared to the basic ones, which only hold 2 million and can output 1,000. I still have the capacitor here because I like the readout here, and I also like the ability that we can put stuff in here to charge. So, I also went ahead and made us an Inferium crop. This is a tier 3 Inferium crop, which, when broken, will give you 3 Inferium Essence per crop. Um, it has occurred to me in the interim that it is a waste to create tier 3 right off the bat. I should have just gone straight for a whole bunch of tier 1s because it would have given us more overall. And we get seeds faster. There's a 5% chance if you break them to get an extra seed, which is why I broke it. I did discover that silty farmland apparently does not work with inferium crops, so you have to have regular farmland. Additionally, I also moved our water from over there to over here. This is a temporary solution. I want to get to work on an actual waterworks in an episode or two, but we're not quite there yet because I want to get the farm situation under control today. And you guys might see on the mini-map where we have the beginnings of that. Um, one more thing that I did off camera before we get into that is I did go ahead and get the basics of steel production going. We have enrichment chambers here from Mechanism. Well, not these aren't enrichment chambers. It says, it says enrichment chamber up there, but these are metallurgic infusers. Iron plus coal equals enriched iron, which gets fed into here, plus coal equals steel. Which I've already put in the uh, ME system here. But you can see we have some steel. We got Industrial Craft 2 steel right there. Um, so... This episode, I want to get started on farming. You guys might see that I have a little farm set up over here. I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. I have a little farm set up over here. These are 9x9 nine nine plots, and these are also apparently in the wilderness, so I'm going to have to expand our chunk boundary. Um, these are also made with standard dirt, not the silty dirt. I don't know if silty or loamy farmland has a growth penalty or not, so I didn't want to try it. So, we're using just regular old farmland with some water stone and some dirt for the borders to make it look pretty. These are standard 9x9 farm plots with water in the middle. Basically what you'd see if you were doing a vanilla farm. We're not going to be doing vanilla farms. Um, we're instead going to be taking a look at, hopefully, two different types of farming blocks. The first one is from Actually Additions. That is called the farmer. It takes four seeds, an iron casing, which is irons, bamboo, and black quartz. It also takes something called Inori crystal blocks, which is nine Inori crystals, 
which are made with the atomic reconstructor. So, an atomic reconstructor. What the hell is that? This is the tier 1 crafting mechanic for actual editions. Let's go ahead and get one. Actually, I can just click right here. This is an iron casing, redstone, and iron. So, the first thing we're going to need is an iron casing. We're actually going to need two of them, so we'll just go ahead and make them now. We also need this. This is our atomic reconstructor. And you can see, little modulator, tiny bit moleculizer. This thing kind of does what the QED did and changes its name on us. So, it's fun. We're going to go ahead and pop this thing right about here. And you can see this thing requires power. One thing I'm going to do before I give this thing power is I'm going to get a redstone torch. And we are going to right click this thing with the redstone torch to change it into pulse mode. If it's on deactivation mode, you have to apply a redstone signal to keep it from firing. It's a pain in the ass. I hate it. We're not going to do that. We want it in pulse mode because this way we give it a redstone pulse and it does stuff for us. That's what we want. We're also going to need some conduit. And we're going to need to connect said conduit under the floor. Just like that. This thing is now getting power. And we're going to want to put this right back there. Good. So we're now getting power. Redstone pulse. We can put a button on this, but I actually prefer to be a little bit tricksy about this. I like using a wooden pressure plate. Put a wooden pressure plate in front of it, and now if an item falls on that, it'll fire its laser. <laughs> I'm a fire, and yeah, you guys get it. So, the Atomic Reconstructor allows us to make different things from actually additions. It's the Tier 1 crafting mechanic. It lets us make um, Redstonia Crystals, which is Redstone, Palace Crystals, which is Lapis, Diamantine, Void Crystal, which is Coal, you guys can figure out what emeratic is. And Nori Crystal is iron. Um, the empowered stuff, this all comes later. So we're not there yet. The farmer that I want to make requires four Inori Crystal blocks, which means we need four iron blocks. This thing's kind of expensive. How are we doing on charge? Full charge? Good. And we have Inori crystal blocks now. Toss those in. Get our farmer. This thing is cool. Basically, what you do with this is, and I'm going to take wheat over to demonstrate. We'll take wheat seeds. We'll bring over a few stacks of these. And let's see here. I'm going to need... Crescent hammer. I might actually want some more conduit. How much conduit binder do I have? Uh, I only have 11 energy conduits, so I might want to make some more... Let's see, the basic energy conduit is conductive iron, which is just redstone and iron. So I think I'm going to make a little more of this. We'll make uh, another... Nah, I'm not going to need that much. We'll make another 15. And you might have noticed I put a capacitor in this thing, which increases its speed to 170 RF a tick. So this thing now flies. A lot faster. The other thing I'm going to make, which I haven't gotten there yet, and I don't even have all of the required materials for this. Why would I have everything I need for an episode? Let's go ahead and go to the nether real quick because I need some soul sand.
If you're familiar with modded Minecraft, you probably know what the other option I'm going for is, and there's pros and cons to both options, and my cats are going wild. You guys can probably hear that. There are pros and cons to both options. Um, for those of you who haven't figured it out, uh, what the hell is it called? It's not a planter. It's out of Ender.io. It's, 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 where the hell is it? The farming station. This requires electrical steel, a machine chassis, pulsating crystals, and a Z-Logic controller, plus a diamond hose. So this is a bit more expensive, but it's also a lot more powerful. The Z-Logic controller, however, requires a machine that I don't currently have called a Slice and Splice, which requires Solarium. Solarium is made with gold and soul sand in an alloy smelter, so hence the need for soul sand. Watch me not be able to find any frickin' soul sand anywhere. Because now I need it. I am curious as to whether this Inferium ore is affected by Fortune, which it appears to be. I went ahead and tacked Fortune 3 onto this pickaxe since I have nearly an unlimited supply of lapis because of a gift that I got last episode. Apparently, Chago created a dimension of nothing but... Oh, holy shit. Um, Chago created a dimension of... Nothing but uh, lapis. Blocks, not ore. He created lapis blocks as a dimension. And gave me a stack of lapis blocks. Ow. As a gift. And, oh, shit. Normally, I don't take those kinds of gifts, but I made an exception. Um, what the hell is that? It sees me. I don't like it. I don't like that either. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. That thing looks creepy. I don't want anything to do with it. Oh, a ghost. Is that a villager? Oh, nope. You are not going to shoot at me. Okay, I'm curious. Because this thing sounds exactly like a villager. I'm curious if it's hostile. Are you hostile? I'm guessing you're hostile. You're hostile. Ow. Nope, we're not playing this game. We're going home. Should have known the moment I saw it was from Quark. Quark adds a lot of stuff that just wants to kill you. Ow. End dagger needs food. Probably going to need a second grilled cheese. I don't think one's going to do it. Okay, anyway, um, conductive iron's done. Need some conduit binder. Along with the conductive iron. Gets me an absolute crap load more energy conduit, which is good. Um, we need some solarium. So I'm going to make 20 pieces of solarium. That ought to be enough. So, we need to make the Slice and Splice. Slice and Splice is any sort of head, five bars of solarium, iron axe, shears, and a machine chassis. Machine chassis is, as shown, 
need a couple of capacitors. That gets us the machine chassis. We're going to need two of them, so we may as well go ahead and make them. And now we need an iron axe and a pair of shears. We'll go ahead and start grabbing the solarium here. And what? How many skulls do I have versus heads? I have a ton of zombie heads. I'm going to use a zombie head for this. You can use any head. But I'm going to use the zombie head because, well, that's what we have the most of. And I need a place to put this. Um, just gonna, I'm just going to put... No. No, no, no. I'm going to put it right here. I want that conduit back. Or marble, whatever it was. Whatever it was, I wanted it back. Slice and splice, in. And I'm going to... This is going to have its own room. Like, I'm not going to have this in my living room. It, it's mad science. It shouldn't be in here. But for the sake of getting the episode done, I'm putting it in here for the moment. This thing requires an axe and a pair of shears. It doesn't matter what type of axe and what type of shears. The only thing that this does is grant more durability. They last longer. That's it. So you can use an iron axe. Now, in order to make the farming station, we need a Z-Logic controller, which is two solarium, two silicon, a zombie head, this one has to be a zombie head, and redstone. All right, let's go ahead and make ourselves three Z-Logic controllers. Except you can't stack these. So we'll go ahead and set up the second combination. When this gets done, it's going to take some durability off of both of these things, and it's going to give us a Z-Logic controller. Which basically is a uh, Franken zombie. It it's something that thinks for you and does work for you. It, I mean, how how much can you explain it? You know. So let's throw the Z Logic controllers in there and let's get the farming station going. We need pulsating crystals, which requires pulsating iron nuggets. Um. which I have none of. So we need some pulsating iron. Which is going to take... I hate doing this because it's going to be the last of our ender pearls. I'm going to have to farm some ender pearls off camera. But this gives you pulsating iron. That got us three whole pieces of it. Vile dust. Okay. I guess I have some vile dust from soul shards now too. Um, so this gets us our pulsating iron nuggets. And if we put those around a diamond, we get our pulsating crystals, which we need two of. We're also going to need a diamond hoe, which means we need some sticks. diamond hoe. We're actually going to want a second one of these. And we need some electrical steel, which I believe I already have. Uh, I have most of it. Electrical steel is iron, coal powder, and a silicon. So we'll have to grind up a piece of coal. Iron, coal dust, silicon. 
gets us electrical seal. That gets us a farming station. So, difference between the two blocks. The farmer can farm a 9 by 9 area in front of it. So, if I take this thing and I set it, for example, right here. Um, this thing will farm the 9x9 nine nine area in front of it for me. You feed it seeds, you give it power, which I don't think I have enough conduit, actually, to make the trip. So for right now, I'm going to feed this a capacitor until I have a chance to get conduit run over there. Actually, you know what? Hell with it. Let's go ahead and make another 15. Yeah, we'll make some more of this conduit. I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather actually do it right, you know? And <clears throat> we're going to run this conduit. I want this to come out of the capacitor bank, and I'm going to run it through the air. No. Yes. Break. No. Wrong one. And I will pretty this up off camera. For right now, I just wanted to get over here and do what I needed to do. really probably should have taken this into account while I was doing this. Ow. Okay, that actually didn't hurt. I'm not sure why. I want to kind of line this up. And I'll probably run this underground, or I'll make some immersive engineering lines and run those over to the farm, or some other solution, as opposed to what I'm currently doing, because this looks tacky as hell. Now, let's make sure I'm on the right line. Yes, we're good. It has occurred to me that I don't know why I'm taking the time to run all this conduit if I'm just planning on tearing it up between episodes anyway. I guess to show how you would do it if you weren't trying to be efficient in your use of space, like I normally am. Oh well. I guess I'm usually efficient in my use of space. I'm usually not efficient. I'm usually not like decorative. And right now I'm trying to be decorative. That's what's got me thrown off. There's 40 more of it. <clears throat> this will get the job done anyway. That inferium crop is almost grown again. That's good. Come on, almost there. There we go. 
The farmer is connected, and now you can see what it does. It does exactly what you would expect it to do. It eats the absolute living crap out of 100,000 RF, and it plants seeds for you. If the ground wasn't already tilled, it would till it for you, which you just saw happen right there. Now that means it's not going to go back in there and plant the seed until it makes its next pass. It checks every block individually. So it makes a full pass of the field, and then it comes back, and then when it comes back and checks this block again, it'll say, hey, there's no seed planted there, let's fix that pop. But this thing will quite happily watch your field for you, and when the plants grow, it'll break it, it'll store produce over on this side, and it'll store seeds on this side. This thing is great if you want to grow a large field of one type of crop, like, say, wheat, or soybeans, or potatoes, or carrots. What it's not great at is if you want to grow more than one thing in the same field. This can only handle one type of seed. You can put other types of seeds in here, but you can never be sure what it's going to plant unless you spend time babysitting it and making sure that it's got the right type of seed. This thing is great if you have a single purpose. Not great for flexibility. Let's get to flexibility. Flexibility requires the farming station. <clears throat> the farming station is capable of farming a 7x7 seven seven around it by default. So it can't quite farm this whole field. It has to be placed in the middle of the field, which means you're going to want to place it over the water if you're going to have your water centralized. This thing has a much larger and much more in-depth GUI, which we'll get to in a minute. As soon as I connect it to power. There we go. And let's break that one. Okay, this thing now has power, but it has no seeds. Well, it also doesn't have a hoe. So, let's give it the diamond hoe. You can put bone meal in this. I don't know what these are. Is this wood? I guess beats me. Anyway, this thing uses 40 RF a tick. Now, this thing only uses RF if it actually does something. If it breaks a block, or if it, to or if it hoes a block, or if it plants a seed, this thing is going to use 1500 RF. Other than that, it uses no RF passively. It only does, it only uses RF if it's doing something. This one uses RF at all times. This one burns 40 RF a tick, no matter whether it's doing anything or not. But this thing is a lot more powerful in that it can handle multiple types of crops. So, if I come in here, and I'm curious, yes, I do have emeralds, okay. Um, this thing, if I were to take some industrial hemp seeds, some canola seeds, um, I've also got some plain old canola here, which will break up into seeds, some peanut seeds, which I have over here, these things. And a mystical agriculture seed. Oh, I got a spare seed. Yes, awesome. Let's take the worm, too. Come here, wormy. Where did the wormy go? Did he go away? Oh, well. If I were to bring all of these seeds over here, and why did you change back to dirt? I don't know. But if I were to put industrial hemp seeds in the southwest, it's going to use the seeds there to plant the southwest quadrant. Note it can only hold 16. If we put canola seeds in there, it's going to use canola seeds to plant there. Again, it can only hold 16. 
Uh, let's change our peanuts into seeds. <clears throat> we'll put peanuts in here too. Now it's going to plant our peanuts. And it went ahead and hoed that spot for us again. And I don't have enough inferium seeds to do this, but it's going to plant our two inferium crops. This thing, unlike this, can be upgraded. You notice it has a slot here. That slot is for more than show. It's time to make the second tier. I have some more peanut seeds here, too. I'll have to go throw them in. It's time to make the second tier of capacitor. There are three tiers of, cap of capacitor in Ender.io. Basic, double layer, and octatic. Now, I don't know why it's called an octatic, because octatic makes you think eight, and this only involves four, so it should be a quadratic, I would think, but whatever. The double layer capacitor requires a piece of coal, a couple of pieces of energetic alloy, and two basic capacitors. So, one, two. We need a piece of coal, ground down into coal dust. which we have right there. And then we're going to need two pieces of energetic alloy. This is gold, redstone, and glowstone. That will give us energetic alloy. which lets us make a double layer capacitor. Double layer capacitors can be put in the regular machines. I don't think these can be put in... Well, it might be able to be put in the farming station. I don't know. I haven't tried. <clears throat> but I know the octatic one can't. So, we will go ahead and toss in our double layer capacitor, which now increases this thing's RF cost. It now uses 60 RF a tick. But now we can hold 32. And it also increased the area of effect. The area of effect of this thing is now 10 by 10, or 11 by 11 rather. It adds two. So the water stone here is actually space that could be farmed if it was dirt. Excuse me for a second while I mine the zombie's dome. Now, it's going to give us the no seeds warning because I don't have all... Leave me alone. I don't have enough peanut seeds. Or inferium seeds. In order to completely fill the thing. Okay, this thing is actually starting to kick my ass. Leave me alone! Piss off! Piss right the hell off! I think I'm the only one on the server, so I'm going to sleep. I'm tired of fighting off the hordes. And now I'm stuck in my bed. This is a vanilla bug, unfortunately. And if you try to get out of your bed, nothing will happen. Unless you are kicked from the server, killed by something, or we have a mod, a mod install called Bedbugs, which if you try to leave the bed and it fails to get you out, you have a kick me button, which you hit that, and it kicks you from the server, and then you can reconnect, which is what I'm going to have to do.
Now I just have to wait for <clears throat> this thing to realize that I've been kicked. There we go. Uh... Any day now. Really looking forward to getting a processor and motherboard upgrade. Come on. Hello, computer. Yes, thank you. Okay. Let's come over here, grab myself a couple more grilled cheese sandwiches. Actually, I guess one more. And I am going to get one more thing before I wrap up the episode. There are, if you haven't noticed, an absolute crap ton of different types of plants in Harvest Craft. Like, there's a crap ton of stuff added by Harvest Craft. Different fruits, different vegetables, different foods, different this, different that, different everything. It's absolutely insane. How long do you think it would take to find every single one of these stupid seeds out in the wild? Answer? way too frickin' long. Thankfully, they thought of that. I don't really have this in sync mode, which is why I typed it in here. The market. Four pieces of wool, four pieces of wooden planks, and an emerald. So this thing is kind of expensive. However, the market is an absolutely amazingly useful block, and you're about to see why. Uh, good, I'm full. The market, which I'm going to just pop down under here, allows you to buy seeds. It also allows you to buy bone meal for three emeralds. I don't know why you would ever do that. It allows you to buy spawn eggs for varying amounts of emeralds. So we can get sheep or cows or pigs. You can buy saplings of pretty much any type offered by either vanilla or harvest craft for three emeralds. And then you can buy all of the different types of seeds for one emerald each. There's a specific type of seed that I really want. The soybean seed. So I'm going to buy a soybean seed. And I'm going to get myself some bone meal. Because I'm going to duplicate this soybean seed out the wazoo. Remember the inferium crop that I planted over here? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to leave it as an inferium crop. I'm going to go ahead and break these up. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a soybean seed there. Where did it plant that soybean? There. Why? Don't plant it there. Plant the soybean there. I think. Is that where I want it? Yes, that's where I wanted it. We'll go ahead and grow that, and if we wait for a few seconds here, it realized that, yep, it realized that we could harvest, and it gave me more soybeans. So, I'm going to go ahead and just mass produce some soybeans. We're going to split those down into seeds, and then we're going to put the seeds in here. We're also going to lock all of those. And then what's the last one that I'm missing? Peanuts. Let's go ahead and get us a few more peanuts, too. Put the peanut seeds in there and lock that. 
No seeds my ass. So, we now have a full field growing. It might be saying... Or, nope, now we're good. Probably just because I hadn't planted this spot yet. So, we have four different types of crops being planted over here now. But, we need a way to get all of our crops out of these and into a storage. My episode's going to go a little over 40. But considering I lost my last footage and had to recap a little bit this time, I'm not going to worry too much about it. We're going to get ourselves some item conduits. We'll toss all this stuff away. Actually, the seeds, the inferium seeds, I want them. I'm going to plant those again. And I want a wormy. We're going to need a chest. I'm going to take a jungle chest because it looks a little cooler. And we're going to go ahead and connect our item conduits on the same line as these conduits. We're going to click on this, and we're going to be on the chest. We're going to do extract, active without signal. It should not touch anything on this side, so that should be good. Over here, we're going to have extract without signal. And then right behind here, we're going to put a chest, which we're going to attach as well. And this is going to be insert on green channel. So, you can see we already got some soybeans. Awesome. Why did I want soybeans, though? Well, soybeans are an absolutely amazing food. Let me go ahead and grow a few of them here real quick. Soybeans are an amazing food because you can do so much with them. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now that what I'm about to show you, I do not advocate in real life. I in no way, shape, or form advocate this in real life, because what I'm about to show you in real life would be considered blasphemy. There's an object called a presser. It uses some sort of metal and pistons. So we'll go ahead and make some pistons. Apparently I need to break down some more ebony wood. And we'll use, actually I am going to use iron because it's what I have the most of right now. We'll make two pressers. Pressers? Uh, let's see, where am I going to put those? I'm going to put those over here for the moment. It's okay, it doesn't matter. We'll toss our soybeans in there. And if you compress soybeans, you get silken tofu which is considered a light meal. If you compress silken tofu, you get firm tofu and soy milk. You can also get some grain bait out of these things, which you can toss in ground traps and get food that way, but eh. We'll go ahead and get ourselves a couple more pieces of this firm tofu. Now, by itself, the firm tofu and the soy milk are considered light meals, but they have another use. We toss these in the fridge, and we take a look in here. You will see that we now have access I uh, thought we'd have access. Apparently, we don't. You know what? I have to say thank you, Pam, for changing your mod so that you can't use tofu to make frickin' hamburgers anymore.
because you used to be able to make hambu, or if you used to be able oh, raw tofake? How do you make tofake? Okay, you can still use tofu to make hamburgers, but it takes a whole lot more stuff now. It takes black pepper, mushrooms, cooking oil, and soy sauce in order to be able to do that. So, again, thank you, Pam, for changing it so that you can't do this anymore. Because you used to be able to take tofu and use it as a direct substitute for meat, and it was blasphemy. So, I may want to rethink the number of soybeans I have growing over there now, but we'll do that in between episodes here. For right now, this has been Night Dagger, with episode, of, I guess this is five now, of Let's Play on Gold's Gorge. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I'm going to make a few changes off camera, get stuff ready for the next episode, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start doing some... Oh, I'm not going to spoil it right now. I'll catch you later, peeps.